So this is the HP Elite Folio, and this is one of the nicest two-in-one notebooks I've ever had on my table. But there is one thing everyone needs to know about this laptop. It's not using an Intel processor, it's not using an AMD processor, it's using an ARM processor. And that means you can't run all the applications that you're used to running on those Intel and AMD notebooks. It's an ARM processor, it's a different architecture. The Windows on this is built for ARM. You can't run x64 bit applications, which are a lot of the apps we use today. You can run 32 bit applications, but you're taking a performance hit because it has to be emulated. Now, Microsoft is releasing an emulator. It's in development right now, and you can test it out for yourself using a beta version of Windows, but the results so far have been really, really poor. Nothing compared to like what you'd get on the Mac side using Rosetta. Now, this emulation is supposed to come out in fall 2021, so just keep that in mind if you're looking at this because you need to really understand what you're getting yourself into before picking up an Elite Folio or even the Surface Pro X. Now, since I'm talking about the Surface Pro X, I think it's only fair to compare it to the Folio because there's a lot of similarities here and the price differences are quite different. The Folio is wrapped in this beautiful leather case and the way you open it up is just like any other traditional laptop. The display comes up, you can open it up with one hand, but if you wanna manipulate it and put it in different positions, all you do is you push the display forward, it pops out, and then you can put it in tent mode if you wanna have a media consumption experience or you can place it flat down if you wanna have it in a tablet position. I kind of like this because the keyboard is always connected. And since you have a proper deck to use, it feels like an actual keyboard. With the Surface Pro, it's a tablet first and then an optional keyboard to connect later. The problem with connectable keyboards is the typing experience is never as good as a proper keyboard. Like, don't get me wrong, this detachable keyboard feels great to type on, but the deck of this folio is so much better. HP actually did an amazing job with the key travel, the way it feels, it's a wonderful keyboard. Even the touchpad is bigger and somehow HP managed to get the accuracy and the feel just as good as Microsoft's offering. Now the speaker setup is also different. With the Surface Pro X, you have these two tiny speakers on the top of the display Whereas on the folio, they're embedded into the top deck of the keyboard. Now the pen setup is also different. With the Surface Pro X, it's an optional accessory that comes with the keyboard, whereas with the Folio, it already comes with the laptop in the box. Now there are some differences. The actual pens themselves have a lot of similarities. They have this like flat rectangular look, but the Surface Pro X pen is smaller. It also looks nicer too. With the Folio, they have connector pins, whereas the Surface Pro X pen actually charges wirelessly. I like the way the Pro X feels better in the hand, but quite frankly, the differences are very minor. The actual drawing experience are identical. Like I didn't find drawing with the Folio pen to be exceptionally better than the Pro X. They were actually very, very equal. The next thing is the display. And that's one difference that these two have is that you can't buy this Folio with a QHD Plus display where it's standard on the Pro X. You get a bigger display with the Folio at 13.5 inches compared to 13, but it's not as pixel dense, right? It's still 1920 by 1280 compared to 2880 by whatever it is, 1889 or something. And that gives you a better looking screen. Sure, if I was to like calibrate it and get the measurements, technically the Folio has a better color gamut and, 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 and color accuracy, but the Surface Pro X gets brighter and of course it has more pixels to work with. Now they do both support Windows Hello with facial recognition to log you in, but none of these laptops have a fingerprint scanner. The other thing is the webcam. Like if you value a good webcam because you're working from home, 
HP's rocking that 720p webcam, which is very weird because there's a Qualcomm chip in here and those things can support 4K cameras. Whereas the Surface Pro X is using a 1080p camera and just looks much, much better. Now, if you care about connectivity, like you're on the road and you don't have access to Wi-Fi, they both can have a cellular plan, but the Surface Pro X only supports up to LTE, whereas on the Folio, you can actually put a 5G chip inside of here. There's a little place beside the pen where you can insert the SIM card and then you just push it in right here and then you can get cellular connectivity whereas on the Surface Pro X you have to place your SIM card on the back of the device. The other thing is not a lot is upgradable on either of these machines. You can't upgrade anything on the Folio, but at least with the Surface Pro X, if you want a bigger SSD, you have the option to swap it out. Another design thing that I like about the Folio is that the ports are actually in the sides of the laptop. You know, you have one USB Type-C port on the right-hand side and another USB Type-C port on the left-hand side. Now, no USB Type-C port on either of these laptops support Thunderbolt, but you get two of them. The downfall with the Surface Pro X is it's not built into the keyboard, obviously. It's on the side of the Surface Pro, which is fine because it's on the main component, but like if you're connecting stuff to it, it's gonna hang from the sides of your display, which looks super messy. Whereas on the Folio, it connects to the bottom base, which looks a lot cleaner if it's in a typical laptop position. But here's the thing, like these are ARM-based computers and you have to really understand what you're getting yourself into. They both have very similar specs with a few variations and they both perform very similar. They don't come anywhere near or close to the MacBook Pro M1. They're still significantly slower. But here's the thing, like you have to think of these products as a high-end Windows Chromebook. So if you live in a browser and you're okay with using Microsoft's Edge, which has been compiled for ARM, and you're a hardcore Office user, and you use tons of extensions, you're gonna love these things. Like they're gonna run fantastic. And even if you need to do the odd thing, like chat on Discord, and things like that. There's 32-bit versions of that that work fine. It doesn't run as fast and fluid as the, the Intel apps being translated on Rosetta on the Mac side, but it works. But let's be realistic here. You're living in the browser, plus you're supplementing a few applications which are 32-bit, which means it has to be translated. That means performance is gonna take a hit and battery life is gonna take a hit. The battery life on this is good. You're probably gonna get eight, nine hours of regular use, which is still good for today's standard, but it's gonna be nowhere near the 24 to 25 hours that these companies are promising. And this brings me back to the same thing I talked about before. You need to know why you're buying this. If it's because you wanna enter a new style of computing and you're living in the web browser and you want something that looks and feels different than traditional laptops that are currently on the market, just know that this is not gonna be consistent all the time. There are gonna be times where you run into little hiccups and issues and have to take the time to research if there's a way around it. Because if there's not, you're probably not gonna be able to run that app, especially true if you're using the Adobe Suite, like you can't run anything on these things except for Lightroom. And that brings me to the final thing. Should you buy the Folio or should you buy the Surface Pro X? This is $1,889. And yes, you get slightly better speakers, a nicer looking design, you, you, you get the pen that's included and, and a bigger touchpad, but, you don't get the crispier, more pixel dense display that the Surface Pro has. And the Surface Pro X, even with the type cover, is still almost $500 cheaper. And because of that, I still think the Surface Pro X is a better buy. I hope this video cleared up some stuff for you and helped you out on deciding whether or not you should buy one of these things. But if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.